Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Can I get you zoomed out here or what? Let's see. That should be good. Okay, so the bottom of the canvas looks like it's blending into the table. What I'm doing is I am attempting to do an ocean resin pour and I'm attempting to make a scene of the black sand beach in Maui, Hawaii, which is absolutely breathtaking. Um, from what I've read, it's from the volcanoes there. There's just a bunch of, I guess, built up stuff from that. So the sand is black. It's a fantastic view if you've never seen it go on google and do a search for black sand beach hawaii and it will pop up it's uh i know there's one in maui i'm not sure if there's one anywhere else so anyway what i've done so far on the bottom i painted with black acrylic paint um to get this done now uh ahead of time because it takes a long time for it to dry and stuff and i didn't want to bore you guys with that so i painted some black acrylic paint and I literally sprinkled black sand into the wet paint and it dried and it, it held it down enough until I get the resin on it so I'm happy with that um, now what I want to do though because the canvas is white I want to with acrylic paints just splash in some to some different shades of blue just to cover that before I start with the resin now that beach, the images that I've seen, the water is more blue. Like if you look at the water in Mexico or the Caribbeans, places like that, the waters there are more of a greenish turquoise, you know, something like that. To me, when I look at the ones in the Pacific Ocean, they're more of a really deep blue um wow that's really showing up bright blue but my my plan is to do like a darker blue version of the ocean i have here this acrylic paint that has glitter mixed into it it's by art minds it's called magic mermaid and what i'm planning to do is paint the white part here with a couple of different paints and then take this and do some thin lines down closer to the beach so when the resin gets a little lighter when i start adding less color into the resin when i get towards the bottom in the beach area some of this will poke through when it dries i believe it's like the label just pure glitter so that's why i don't want to paint a lot of it i'm just going to put some little strokes in there so what i'm going to do is use i think this ice blue metallic paint and i'm going to show you why i'm choosing these darker blues because i'm trying to match them with the mica powders that i have so i'm going to be using this when i do the resin portion i'm going to use this caribbean blue mica powder and it's very similar to the acrylic paint. Okay, see how close that is? So that's why I'm choosing these color paints. So I'm going to have a my primary color, which will be this shade. Then I'm going to have hints of a darker color, which I'm going to use this mysterious color by Art Minds. And for the mica, I'm not sure on that yet. Maybe I'll go with a, uh, I have this mermaid here. No, that's not good. I'll have to look through and see the colors that I have. Maybe something like this, which is, I think this is a peacock green from Just Pigment. So anyway, I'm going to use that color then i'm also going to use this indian turquoise for 
the lightest shade. And then I'm contemplating on the white, and here is why. I may just use a very light blue, so light that it is close to white in the resin layer. See, you really can't see it on the camera, but this is very, very close. It's such a light pale white, it's called light blue, that it may just look white. The problem is, is I only have stone coat white right now. I know I can use acrylic paint too. That's I could use acrylic. I was thinking more along the line of using pigments in the resin layer. And I only have stone coat and that sells up. And I don't want to have a bunch of cells in my ocean. So I don't know. When we get that far, I'll figure it out. But for right now, I just want to do my little back layer here and move on from there. I have this paint brush that I had gotten a while ago and I never used it. I want to try to use it, see if it helps with blending the colors. You see how it's cut? I thought maybe that would add some fun texture into the paint and have it, you know, blend together kind of streaky because that's how I want it. So what I'm going to do is take a palette knife and just plop on some of these colors. So like I said, the Ice Blue by Deco Art is the main color. I want a majority of this to be the darker colors and then a majority of this to be the lighter color. So that when I get down to the beach, it's almost gonna be clear, if that makes sense. And then I also have some shells and stuff like that. I'm also working on, right now for you guys, a pink sand beach of Bermuda. And it's a big, big piece. It's at my sister's house. I'm, I'm working on it over there. It's two foot by four foot. And it is coming out quite beautifully. So I'll be happy to show you that soon. The pink sand beach I chose because next year is my 20th anniversary with my baby. And I told him, he has no say in it. We are going. So. He knows better than to argue, I guess. You know, maybe I don't even need a palette knife. I'm, ju I'm just going to kind of just spread it out with that brush I have. And I'm doing this just because I want to see kind of what it's going to look like. And if the resin doesn't cover the sides good, I'll have paint there. There's nothing worse than having a beautiful painting and then what do you know? There's a white spot on the side. All right. Let's try that for now. Actually, you know what do I want to do? I want to start down here with the light colors so I don't have to clean my brush off in between. I can just work my way up. So let me do that. This paint has been sitting quite a while, so I shook it and shook it, but it's still separated a bit. I'm just sticking a popsicle stick in there and mixing it up. see I have a very advanced technique <laughs> such a pro maybe just a 
little bit more down here. All right, so let me spread this out first. So down here, you won't see any difference using this brush because it's just one color. Sure to get those sides. I'm trying to avoid this sand. I don't want to drag it into the paint, even though I know I'm going to, because I'm just that kind of a person. I honestly, I don't think I could be careful if my life depended on it. All right. The only thing I did to the canvas was tape the back off. I know that it's going to sag in the middle. So the first layer of resin that I do will be a probably thin one just to firm it up. It, you ha to me, you have to do a couple of layers when it comes to an ocean painting just to get the depth and the effect that you want. So I don't mind if it sags a bit in the beginning because it's going to get nice and hard and work for me in the second and third layer. It's a little bit of sand in there. Get right up to that beach. Beautiful. Okay, so now up here, I'm just going to start dragging it up into the other colors. Let's see if this brush does anything spectacular. Probably not. Then again, I'm probably not using it the right way anyway. So... I think these colors will look good together. Here, let's see. Let's try it in here. So it does make some type of a uh, stroke in it. little too much paint on there. And I'm not going to bother putting any of the light blue up in the top because I am going to do that in the resin layer. Like I said, I just wanted to cover this part and get some colors in there. Just so there's a base. Now the last color I have to do is that glitter paint. I'm just getting the back side here. Gently brushing its back side. Okay. All right, so now I have 
this glitter paint. So let's give it a try. Oh, let's see here. We got a little wood stick. And I'll just drag it through some areas so that when it dries, there'll be little bits of glitter here and there throughout the painting. If you even see them, maybe they may get covered. That's why I wanted a majority of it to be where the lighter color is going to go. Yeah, it's all an experiment, people. It's the only way we learn things is to try them. Kind of just making little wave cap shapes with it. Uh, because in my mind, I'm picturing to use the clear resin down here, or maybe lightly, lightly tinted. And then if I use white, have like some clear and white going over this when it's dry. So when it's done, you're going to see like a little white wave cap on top of like little glitter waves. That is my plan anyway. Whether it works or not will be another story. So I'm picturing where my waves, I think I want them to be coming down onto the beach. Probably one big one right here. Okay. You know what? For the hell of it, I'll put a couple up here. I don't know if you'll see it or not. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. And you know what, I think I'm going to do one tiny little one right here and then stop. So now what I have to do guys is let this dry. And then I will be back to do the fun part. So I'll be back in a blink of an eye, literally. Hey guys, all right, so what I've done is I've just added my shells to the board. Uh, I figured I'd get that out of the way. So I have some shells and I have some little pebbles and some sea glass. And you will also notice I covered up those uh, glitter streaks. I did not like them at all. You can still see them through here, but I'm pretty sure that you won't be able to once the the piece is totally finished and there's a couple of layers on res of resin on it. This is only the first layer. I am using a majority of acrylic paints 
This is the Turquoise Waters by Deco Art. This is the Pearl uh, Pearl Jet Stream by Martha Stewart. And it's a very, very, very light blue. Looks almost white. I have some Basic White by um, Artist Loft. For mica powders, I mixed up a little bit of blackish green and peacock green from Just Pigments to make that color. And then my main color is the Caribbean Blue by Brambleberry. This is a soap mica I had. Very pretty blue color. So the first thing I want to do is I want to pour some color here, skip the center, and pour some clear down here. So this way I can work that center up towards the top and towards the clear. So I want to make sure that I have my clear. I probably should have taped this, but I didn't. So hopefully everything will stay on. But I want to make sure that there is clear down in this area. I do not want it to have color in it. So I'm just going to drizzle this along. Just set this over here. Plus I have a large amount of resin in the cup and I don't want it to get hot on me. I am using Envirotex today, so I don't have a long working time. I have about 20, 25 minutes. And then once I add those acrylic paints and I get even less time sometimes because resin and acrylic paints, they just don't like each other. Kind of just dribbling along here. A nice coat going. All righty. I'll give that some time to work itself down towards the bottom here. Okay. So now up here, I'm just going to kind of blend them together. Yeah, I did not like that uh, glitter paint at all. Not for this project anyway. Too phony looking. I think it's better like to use in maybe a mixed media project where you want a nice thick coat of glitter. After I'm done with this video, I'm so excited. I have to do another video uh, for all you acrylic pourers out there. I found something at Joanne's. I'm not going to say what it is, but I'm excited to share it. It's going to make some people's lives much easier when it comes to that. I made enough resin here.
think what I'm going to do like on the second layer is add um, some some pigments and then like the mica powders or maybe paste and then add in some really transparent colors too so that you'll be able to see this underneath. I really like working with alcohol inks with resin. I know um, they get a bad rap. A lot of people claim they fade. I have pieces that I've had for two or three years and they still look exactly the same as the day I made them. I do use a lot of ink. Um, I don't follow the 20, the 10 percent rule. I probably put in more like 20 percent and I pour them on the canvas right away so they don't have time to heat up. And I don't have a problem with them. I mean, they are displayed in places that don't have direct sunlight, but you know, if you want to use them and just put them on a living room wall or something where there's not a lot of light, you, you might be just okay. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just doing my thing with the colors. I'm not sure if I want to add any of this into the top, so I'm not going to do it right now. I'll do it on the second layer if I feel it needs lighter shades because I am going to be putting white, don't forget, up in the top area there for wave caps and down in the bottom too by the shoreline. So I don't want to add too much. If you take your sticks, your mixing sticks, wipe them off good and set them to the side on your plastic that you're working on, you can reuse them again. There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly fine. The cured resin on the stick is not going to contaminate your new resin if you decide to use them. It's a way to, to save money. I use mine sometimes 20 times before I throw them out. Just wipe them down good and you'll be good to go. See how that looks almost white? It's not, but it looks it. <clears throat> and I also want to mention, I'm having a friend come over. Hopefully she'll be able to come this week. And she is going to show this old lady how to do a live. I am so excited. And I think for my first live, what I'm going to do is teach you guys something that you can really get a lot of use out of and save yourself a ton of money. And it's not anything to do with resin. I think I'm going to teach you guys how to make homemade laundry detergent. I can teach you how to make 10 gallons, the big jugs, 10 of those for the price of one jug of Tide or Gain. So it is a huge money saver and I hope that you guys tune in for that live. Also, I'm getting um, so many new subscribers. I'm so excited. I have to do another giveaway. So I'm going to announce that too on that live. So make sure you're subscribed and you click that button. All right. So before I put the white down, I'm going to move this a little bit. Okay. And you can see the clear has almost dripped down to the bottom here. 
That's why I wanted to just let it sit. And I'm sorry. And I did add uh, glitter to the wet paint before I put this on top. Um, I'm sorry, I'm saying that all backwards. When I had did the paint after I shut off the camera, I sprinkled some glitter on there. I don't know if you're going to see it after it may pop through here or there, but um, that's what you're seeing. And like I said, these marks that I covered up, you won't see those in the end. My canvas, by the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're probably like, just get on with it. My canvas, by the way, I have not prepped this at all. So... I know I expect it to dip in the center, but it's okay because it's the first layer. On something like this, an ocean pour where you're doing multiple layers, I don't even waste my time with the prepping and all that. I just let it do what it wants to do on the first layer, and after that it'll be nice and rock hard, and you'll be able to do what you want with it. getting cold in Connecticut so things are starting to get harder to work with. I should have really put this resin in some hot water first. As you can see it doesn't even want to move. pretty uh, difficult right now, it's giving me a hard time, plus it has the acrylic paint in it so it's heating up. So I think what I'm going to do is a little chop suey with the stick here because it is just really being difficult for me. I'm going to have to start heating my resin. Just kind of blending it together here and then what I'll do is use my finger in a minute to work down in the lighter area see before I do that I'm going to put a little bit of white in here A little bit down by the shoreline. You 
gives you a little bit coming in onto the shore. Sorry, I had a little piece of sand there. Let me get out. Be a little bit more right here. Put it where you feel it. That's what I say. Put it wherever you feel. You want to see a wave coming down, crashing onto your shore. I'm just trying to cover this spot here. Make some happy little waves. I'm just joking. I can never be Bob Ross. <laughs> uh, never. That's just a little too happy for me. Just putting a little bit more over those spots that I need to cover eventually. Okay, so let me see here. Let's see if I can get this to blow. If not, I might have to use the bow dryer. <clears throat> I don't want to burn it, you know. And I'm burning it. Oh no, I'm burning my uh, little twigs there. That's what I'm burning. Setting plants on fire. Okay. I forgot those were there, so I'm going to get my uh, blow dryer before I set them on fire and rename the painting the burning bush. Okay. Sorry. I'll fix those after.
going to, let's see, I know I have some clear here. Just want to grab some off of my table. No, I don't. Oh yeah, because this is sand too. It's going to say there's some sand in it. I don't want to use it, but I'm putting it on the sand area, so it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to take my stick here and get rid of this a little bit of sand that's there and for layer one I think I'm gonna leave it now let it cure up fill in these little holes that I have and then I uh, once it's cured tomorrow morning I will bring you back for layer two and then we'll really start to get some motion in the ocean. We'll start making some motion in the ocean for sure. We'll add some more of that blue, darker blue, a little bit lower because this is not very low at all. There's, there's more of the light blue than I want. Just tilting it a little bit. All right, so when we come back for the next one, I'm going to work on the second layer and adding more color in. So close your eyes, people, and it will be 24 hours later. Okay, guys, I'm back. Wasn't that a fast 24 hours? <laughs> so, I mixed up all my colors except for one because I want to show you how I do it. I'm going to use spray paint for the white. I'm using cheap Walmart. I've shaken it up really quick. When you, you do spray paint, you cannot put it in, spray the spray paint into a plastic cup, meaning, at some point, your spray paint needs to be blended into resin. You can't spray the spray paint into the resin. And so, therefore, you need to spray it into a cup first and then drip it into your resin and mix it up. Do not use a plastic cup to spray the spray paint in or else it will eat through the cup and go all over the place. Okay? So, always use paper when you're doing anything with spray paint and the resin that you're going to mix it into I would also keep it in paper unless you think you have a really thick type of plastic like a a plastic like this but if it's your standard plastic pa uh, cup paper cup plastic paper cup it makes no sense but you know what I'm saying if it's your standard cup like that, do not use spray paint in it. You'll have a mess. So over to the side, I'm in a well-ventilated room. You should be wearing a respirator. I am not. You're going to take the nozzle. You're going to put it in the cup. You're going to pinch the cup a little bit so that it sprays to the bottom of the cup. Try spray spraying along the side of the cup and letting it drip down into the bottom. At some point, the spray paint's going to start getting too deep and it's going to splash back at you. So you may want to stop before that. Um, I only need a little bit because I only have, you know, let's say a quarter of this little Dixie cup full of resin. So I only need a little bit. So I'm going to do it off to the side. And in the cup, I probably have right now a half a teaspoon worth, which is not much. I'm going to do a little bit more. Okay, so now I got probably a teaspoon worth. So what I'm going to do is take my cup. I'm going to drip it into the resin. Mix it up and we'll be good to go. 
So for colors, I am going to be using that blue mica, the blue Caribbean blue by Brambleberry again. I am using alcohol ink, uh, the Pinata line by Jacquard, Baja Blue. I'm also using on this layer some pearl turquoise by Lumiere. And then I mixed up some of this fluorescent blue, thinking it was a darker, because it looks kind of darker in the bottle, but it's too bright. So I added a little bit of this topaz to it. I'm not even sure if I'm going to use it yet. This is the color I came up with. It killed, it dyed it down a little bit. I may use it, I may not. So, I think that's all of them. Yeah, in the white spray paint. So first thing I'm gonna do again is start at the bottom with my clear because I have a large amount of it in my cup and I do not want it to start heating up on me. Now, because I'm using a majority of acrylic paints, I don't have as much time to work with the resin as I do with pigments and pigment paste. There's just something in the acrylic that the resin doesn't like and it speeds up the curing process. So I'm just gonna get some of this out of the cup and pour it down here, just like I did yesterday. I'll let it work its way to the bottom itself. I'm not worrying about spreading it right now. Also, I want to give a shout out to an artist that I absolutely love watching. She makes beautiful things. This is only one of my favorite artists. Uh, I have many, and I'm going to start shouting them out. But the reason why I'm using saying her name today is because she gave me the inspiration to do this piece. And her name is Sharon Lindley, I believe. She's from Vivid Days. I will link her site, her YouTube channel, at the bottom of this video. She made the most gorgeous ocean painting I've ever seen, I think, the other day. And she really, really inspired me to do this. And she is very pleasant to watch too. Very thorough. I'm sure a lot of you have heard her, but if there's a chance you haven't, please go check her out. You know, it's because of people like that that I'm here today. Okay, I'm going to save this little bit of clear I have here after I do a nice little thin area here. So I want to start getting some of those colors out of the cups. And it's getting colder in Connecticut, so I'm going to have to start heating my resin again, which kind of sucks. And I forgot to do it today, which is why I'm saying it now. Because I'm just not used to it being cooler yet. Because every other day, it's like 100 degrees, then it goes down to 20. So it's just been crazy weather. All right, so up here, the majority of it, I want it to be see-through. So that's why I'm using an alcohol ink. So I'm just going to pour some big sections of the alcohol ink. I'm going to plop that there. I don't know if I made enough. Let me just mix up a little bit more of that. Well, first I'll put this down. 
I get very paranoid when I work with acrylics because I know what happens. They start getting stringy and just really nasty. But I definitely don't want as much of the opaque colors up here. Let me mix up a little tiny bit more of the alcohol ink. That's why I always like to keep a little bit of clear to the side. Because you never know if you're going to need it or not. And I'm actually thinking... No, that's too turquoise. I was thinking about using one that I made that has a little sparkle in it, but I'm not sure it would go. I better just stick with what I was using before. And that is the Baja Blue by Jacquard. Sorry for that short delay, people. Alrighty, here we go. And I'm just going to let that sit right there for a second. So now I need to decide if I want to use this blue that I mixed up. It's very uh, marshmallowy already. Maybe I'll just put some little hints of it here and there. Use more of it up here because I do want to use the resin. I don't want to waste it. Just kind of stringing it through. Okay, that's enough for now. I'll put it a little bit down here. I'm hoping today I can get this resin to move, but as I mentioned, I forgot to heat it again. So we'll see what happens. All right, so now down here by the beach, I wanna keep some of this here. So let me work this through. And I realize this is a totally different color than the first layer. But what I wanted to do was cover up some of that white. This will most definitely be a three layer piece.
So what I'm trying to achieve is get lighter as I go downward. That's really what I'm trying to achieve. Just gonna tilt this a little bit. It's, it's very, very hot already. Not hot, but thick. I'll work some clear through this area too. See what I get. Another thing that I do when I mix large amounts of resin, anything larger than say 10 ounces, I will mix it in one cup and then pour it into an empty one and mix it again for a minute or two. Just to make sure, especially with these cups that have the lines in them, stuff gets caught in there. Whether it be hardener or resin, it definitely gets caught in there. So you can never get 100% of it out. So what I'll do is put it into another cup. And this way I'm confident too when I scrape the bottom, I know it's really been mixed good. The first cup that I used, I would never do that. Okay. So now I need to put some white here and there. So again, I'm going to come down here by the shoreline. And just kind of roll it through there. I just saw a hair somewhere. See if I could catch it. I'm sure it's in my resin by now. <laughs> That's nothing new. I'm just drawing where I think I'm gonna want little waves crashing in to my shore. And then a few up here. I bet you any amount of money that's going to make a pretty wave. Just by the motion of it. You know, this ugly blue that I made here. I am going to use it towards the back here where it's probably going to fall off, but at least it will coat my sides for me. Well, the back side anyway. Because why waste it, right? like that. Let it go over the back where it belongs. And then maybe I'll fill in a couple of these holes here. of my 
blue, my Caribbean blue. It's very, very thick already. It'll be a miracle if this moves for me, guys. So I'm getting ready to heat it. Just have a little bit more in the cups here. I know this part can be quite boring. Just trying to get rid of it. All right, and then I need to put in a little bit more white Up here. Follow whatever this is that's going on. heat it up see what we get let's see what we get I got a bald spot and a few pot spots here but I'll worry about them in a minute so first I'm going to torch it and hopefully not torch my plants again like I did yesterday I'm gonna use the little one Just a little cigarette lighter slash joint lighter that I found at a local bodega. I thought it was a cigarette lighter, but I've been told people use those to light their blunts. <laughs> Which I don't smoke, by the way. Just so you know. You guys see the funky things the spray paint is doing? Yeah, it's kind of high. I might have to use the blow dryer. It's just too thick. I have to remember to start uh, heating my resin now. It's just too thick to do with a heat gun. And I take a chance of burning it the longer. I know some people will sit there with it on there, but I don't want to burn it. I just need a little more air power, that's all. Excuse the noise, guys. Turn down your volume.
All right. I'm just going to mess around with a stick a little bit here. And then we're going to call this layer finished. So I have a few holes, like I said. And I really want it to get over the sides. So far, I'm liking it. So now, tomorrow when I do the next step, what I'm going to do is a lot more clear. And a lot more white, not white, alcohol ink because I want this to show through. So I don't want to be using on the last, if I do, maybe a little tiny bit of mica strips here and there, but for the majority, it's going to be all transparent things that I do on the next layer. Alrighty, so I'm going to stop it right there and I am going to, let's see, yeah, I'm probably going to upload the video now and do a two part because it's going to get way too long. So thank you for watching. Again, check out Sharon on Vivid Days. I will link her below. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the like button, share button, the little bell to be notified. Like I said um, earlier in this video, I'm going to be doing another giveaway soon. And I'm also going to do a live feed on how to make your own laundry detergent, which is a huge, huge money saver. So click that little bell so that you're notified when all of that happens. All right, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for your support and happy pouring.